We turn now to the Supreme Court's decision today on genes and its impact for patients and medical research. The justices unanimously rule that a company cannot patent an isolated human gene. The case involved Myriad Genetics, a company that holds patents on genes correlated with hereditary breast and ovarian cancer, known as BRCA1 and BRCA2. Myriad sells the genetic tests for those cancers. In the majority opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas wrote, Myriad found the location of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, but that discovery by itself does not render the BRCA genes patent eligible. But the justices also found that firms can patent synthetically created genetic material known as cDNA. For a look at the implications, we're now joined by Todd Dickinson. He's the executive director of the American Intellectual Property Law Association. And Sandra Park. She's an attorney with the Women's Rights Project at the ACLU. Their team argued the case against Myriad Genetics. Welcome to you both. And Sandra Park, I want to start with you. Uh, you're, it was your side that was arguing against Myriad being able to, to uh, have control or keep this patent. How do you read the, the justice's ruling? Well, we were very pleased with the ruling. Uh, our fundamental argument all along has been that human genes cannot be patented. And the problem with these patents is they gave Myriad the exclusive right to control what testing was done on these genes and even what research could be done on these genes. And so the court's ruling today lifted that barrier to scientific research, to medical innovations, and that was what our plaintiffs, who are geneticists, pathologists, as well as patients who need better access to this type of testing, that was our goal, and that is what we got from the Supreme Court today. Todd Dickinson, your organization filed a brief supporting the company Myriad. How do you read the result? Well, actually, we our brief didn't support either side in this. We were trying to, as we often do, trying to get the law right based on the history of the and and the and the public policy in this area. Um, I think what Justice Thomas is saying is basically that naturally occurring discoveries in his uh, framing of it uh, are not patentable and that man-made inventions are. He drew a line uh, in this particular case that uh, uh, highlights that. And what do you think that will mean for a company, for Myriad Genetics and, and what it's been able to do? Well, short term, it probably won't have much of an impact. Myriad, these patents expire in the year after next, which is kind of an interesting thing. But there are other patents which Myriad holds. Um, on the cDNA, on the synthetic DNA, on methods of using it, how you use these to do the diagnostic testing. So I would guess for the time being, Myriad's still the, the, the best test you can get, and most people will still want to go there. Insurance covers their test, for example, in many, many cases. So you're saying it, it won't have much of an impact. Sandra Park, you're saying uh, this is good news for patients, for geneticists. So uh, how am I hearing this differently? Well, I think the problem has been that Myriad has used their patents to have a monopoly on genetic testing. Uh, and that has stopped other laboratories, even those that want to offer testing in other, uh, using other methods, or even including the BRCA genes with other genes uh, that are connected to breast and ovarian cancer risk, to provide a more comprehensive picture of a patient's risk. And the ruling today allows for all of that. It allows for that competition. And I think we've already heard um, at least two or three laboratories announcing that they plan to offer genetic testing that includes the BRCA genes uh, within this year. If that's the case, Todd Dickinson, why isn't it uh, a setback for the company? And that they'll, they'll not, it, 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 that, I mean, just to come back to your argument sure. in which he just said that it means that Myriad now has competition. I think other companies yeah. will be able to get into That's companies. right. And I think we'll have to wait and see how the competition plays out and whether others are able to offer a comparable test. Myriad's got many, many years of data, for example, that help normalize the test. I think the bigger question, frankly, is the long-term implication and whether or not the opinion puts at risk thousands of other patents out there in all sorts of other different contexts in biotechnology. We've got plenty of industries that are to which these, these patents could be key in terms of encouraging innovation, encourage, encouraging the investment in the innovation to bring them to, to the market from biofuels to enzymes for clean water to extractive technologies for finding new antibiotics. It raises a lot of questions. And what are you saying it means for them? Well, I think the question is, uh, will th this opinion 
be expanded to cover all those other patents, which may or may be at risk at this point. And that's We've issued patents for 30 years in this area. There's thousands and thousands of them that are out there, and it creates some uncertainty. Well, before we broaden it too much, though, Sandra Park, I want to come back to you, because we talked with a number of, of experts in the field, one, uh, one in particular who was on your side of this argument, arguing that uh, that uh, Myriad should not be able to to patent um, the gene, and one of them said, in essence, agreeing part of, with part of the argument that Mr. Dickinson's making. And and I just want to read to you what they said. They said Myriad still has the proprietary database, which means that even if somebody else, uh, some other company invents a competing test, they're going to have to essentially deal with Myriad's monopoly on information to interpret what those tests mean. Well, we agree that is a problem, and the patents on the genes allowed Myriad to develop that proprietary database, and that's why it's so important that the court's ruling today uh, invalidated these kinds of patents on human genes, so we don't have a situation in the future with other genes where one company um, is able to amass that kind of information. But I think what we'll see going forward is that because there will be competition, because other laboratories will be offering this testing, that kind of information will be much more freely shared. And Myriad's um, hold on that information won't be able to last um, the way that they've, they've tried to do so by using the patents to um, have the monopoly on the testing itself. Well, that actually brings up another point and perhaps another concern. The, the, the societal bargain that's based in the patent system is that if you disclose your invention completely, we will give you the proprietary right for a limited period of time. What happens if you don't have that proprietary right sometimes is it drives it underground. It, it causes researchers to keep it secret, not to do so much collaborative research. That could be a downside to this we haven't seen yet. Well, I want to come at the very end of this discussion back to the, to the essence here, Sandra Park, and that is what does this mean for women who may have the, uh, one of these, the BRCA genes for either breast or ovarian cancer, and, and what are their prospects for getting the kind of help they need, the kind of treatment that they need? What does this decision mean with regard for in, to them? Well, they will um, have better access to genetic testing of these genes. And in fact, it well may be that companies will be offering the testing not only of the BRCA genes, but of the many other genes related to breast and ovarian cancer. And that's really important. When a patient gets a genetic test, um, she doesn't necessarily care only about whether she has a mutation on the BRCA1 or 2 gene. She wants to understand her comprehensive genetic risk for these diseases. And so laboratories will be able to offer that testing, which up to now they have not done because of the myriad patents. Um, there will also be more uh, availability of confirmatory testing or second opinion testing. And yeah. that has been an important issue for many patients. More. And we also think cost will uh, be driven down because of marketplace um, pressures. Very quickly, Todd Dickinson, how do you see the effect on those women we're talking about? Well, I think many of those effects might in, indeed occur, but that's not really a function of the patent system. The question, at the, be, at the basic question is not whether Myriad deserved the patent or not. The question is whether it was patent eligible, and that's what the court ruled on today. I think many people would believe that, that, that this is a very deserving cause and that Myriad's providing a very valuable service and that as we move forward from here, others will get, be able to take advantage of that. All right, we are going to leave it there. Todd Dickinson and Sandra Park, thank you.